history of our nation. Five school years ago, an American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared with the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to, the, to end the long night of captivity. But 100 years later, later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the mantle of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still lynched in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile on his own land. So we have come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. So we have come here today, in a sense, to cash a check when the architects of our, of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was the fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, granted, guarantee the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check. A check which has come back marked insufficient funds, but we refuse to believe that the Bank of, uh, the bank of Justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vault of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cast this check, a check that will, that will give, give us upon the demand, the riches of freedom and security of justice. We have also come to this hollow spot to remind the American people of the fierce urgency of now. Now is the time to make the real promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and distant valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksand of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time that, make, that makes justice a reality for all of God's children. I am not unmindful of some of you who have come here out of great trials and tribulations. Some of you have come from fresh, narrow jail cells. Some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality. You have been the veterans of creative suffering. Continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering is redemptive. Go back to Mississippi. Go back to Alabama. Go back to South Carolina. Go back to Georgia. Go back to Louisiana. Go back to the slums and ghettos of the northern cities knowing that somehow this situation can and will be changed. Let us not wallow in this valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its dream. We hold this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I would think that one day on the red hills of Georgia and the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I would dream that one day, even in the state of Mississippi, a state swollen with the heat of injustice, swollen with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation of where, we'll not, where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but rather by the content of their character. I would dream today. I would dream that one day down in Alabama with a vicious racist with a vicious governor grabbing his lips dripping with words of interposition and nullification. One day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and little girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and little white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low and the rough places made plain, the crooked places made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out the mountains of despair, a stone of hope. With this faith, faith we will be able to transform the dangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will one day be free. This will be the day when all God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, 
Of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, and land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside I let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains top of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from the lookout mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and molehill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. Yeah. Yeah. When this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, to ring, we will let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city. We will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, Yes, yes. <laughs>